Loving Father, we thank you for tonight and ask your blessings upon this subject. Thank you for all those who come faithfully, Lord, to study this course. Guide us now in Christ. Let me pray. Amen. All right, Mr. James. One of each person. We went through and did the journeys of the patriarchs last time. And now we're going to go to this portion regarding house dwellings in Palestine. Now, you've got a sheet over there which um, I'll explain to you in a few moments. <coughs> Come on, give back, give back. All right. That is just right. Okay, now, basically... In the notes, we're looking at uh, houses of one room, and then up and it goes from there to houses of more than one room. So on this sheet, this page over here, okay, this is taken from, uh, Fred, or from Fred H. White's book, Matters and Customs in Bible Lands. It's out of print. I've got it up in my office and I'll just, just the, I'll photocopy some of the things. You notice over here that um, the, first, the, the top left-hand side, you have a peasant one-room house. Now, that's elaborate for a peasant, okay? It's got a courtyard in front, steps leading to the top, the doors open, and you have in the front courtyard, he's got an animal over there that'll, that'll double in. It's like a, uh, uh, a place for the um, uh, animals to be and everything. So it's just like a, a small home on the top. You've got uh, the guys levelling out the top roof. As we go through a few moments, Tom, let you know why. So basically, that's, that's a rough idea. The, the walls are made of either mud brick or sandstone. You don't find people with cut stone, like on the, um, the, the centre or the bottom one, unless the person's got money and can afford it. Otherwise, you don't have that. It's just normally, you find some are just, just plain mud brick homes, and they call them clay houses because they're made of mud brick. All right? So basically, house to one room. The floors were just simply the dirt. That's all there was. Now, it could be mud, or if someone's got a bit more money, they'll put down cobblestone, something like that. So basically, the wealthier homes, they could have mosaics, they're living under the sun. But the average person, no. Now, the walls, either mud-dried bricks. Now, in Job chapter 4, it talks about houses of clay. They could be made of rough sandstone. So if you're out in, the, out in the open over there, you can pick up so stones lying everywhere, like in that uh, middle picture. They pick the stones up over there, just chip a side off and put them on there and they, they cement them in place. Or they can be made out of hewn stone, which is much more expensive. And with the hewn stone, they can go ahead and seal them. Now in Haggai 1.4, God rebuked the Israelites. Instead of building the temple, they're living in sealed houses. That means the houses are built out of stone. Then in front of the stone, you have timber, cedar timber on the walls. They even have cedar timber on the, on the ceilings. So they were sealed with timber. Like the temple was built out of stone, sealed with timber, overlaid with gold. Now that's the temple. Well, they didn't overlay their homes with gold, but they did seal them with timber. And so the person who had money, he'd really he'd make an elaborate thing of his home. And it wouldn't just be a small, a small one-room job like the peasants have. They do a much, much uh, more elaborate thing. The roof was flat. This is a normal thing. So they could dwell on the roof and in the summertime sleep on the roof, make a little booth and sleep up over there. They'd have vines growing on top of the roof, so you can be on the top of your roof over there, a vine growing over there. You can eat off the vine over there, sit down, sunbathe, enjoy yourself, read a book or something, uh, spend the night on the roof. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful, air-conditioned, lovely. And so they, they did that very, very uh, properly because that great big space would go wasted if you had a gable. Just wasted. So a great big flat area on the roof and they'd use that for hospitality, use for many different things. Now, um, they'd make these roofs. First, you simply have some timber going across. Then they'd have timber going the other way around. Then they'd have grass over there. Then there'd be mud. Then there'd be more so bits of timber. Then more mud. And they'd roll them in nice and hard. Then timber, mud, timber, mud. The very, very point, you might have a roof this thick, which is basically made of dirt, with uh, supported and strengthened by, by bits of timber going through it. Then in the top picture, you have a guy rolling his roof, just rolling it flat, making it hard, 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 hard. 
Now, when it's like that, you get rain that resists the rain. Now, heavy rainfalls, you find there'll be leakage into the home. But without heavy rainfall, there's no problem. The Bible refers to a contentious woman like a leaky roof. Doesn't stop. Drip, 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 drip. So, <laughs> yeah, nice illustration. Um, <clears throat> you find it was possible for thieves to dig through roofs. And just like the case we have in, uh, in uh, Mark chapter 2, where you find that the, the people, four people carrying a paralytic come to Jesus Christ and they found that um, Christ in this room, they couldn't get into him. So they climbed up the back of the side stairs, like you have in the middle photo over there, went to the top of the roof, they started digging. They dug a hole in that dirt roof. While they're digging the hole, dirt's falling down. Dirt's not going to fall up, it's going to fall down. They don't want to catch all the dirt. They're digging, they don't care who's, who's getting upset inside there. Then when they grab a big hole over there, they lower their friend down there with dirt on everyone's head. And Christ saw their faith and said, wow, thy sins be forgiven thee. That is a big exercise to do to get through, um, you get this guy to Jesus. Now also, because the roofs, the silk, a lot of these walls were made of mud, you find basically bugs and, and insects and spiders would make their homes inside of them, and even snakes. We're told in Amos chapter 5, verse 18 and 19, that snakes can be in the wall. So God puts his hand on the wall and snake bites him. Now, this is the whole thing, because you're looking at a, a home, you're making out of dirt. And all the bugs love the dirt. They make their home in the dirt. So, um, yeah, just like saying, move aside and let them, let, let them live with you. With windows, they're normally high when they're in the front of the street, so people just can't look in. And they put a lattice in front. Now, there's a picture of a lattice window down the bottom there on your front page. It's nice, it's elaborate, looks very, very pretty, and also keeps out people from, from jumping in, from uh, people, uh, keeps, keeps the light coming in, and it just keeps people from being sticky beaks. Find also that uh, the doors made of sycamore wood, and now you, in those pictures over there, do you see any closed doors there on either side? No. Because to the Jews, the, the sign of hospitality is leave your door open all day. It's like saying welcome. So leave your door open all day, a sign of hospitality. And so that's, that's the way they were back then. It's just a, a custom that God had given to them. That's a wonderful gesture. For furnishing, simple as can be. Mats, cushions, carpets to sit on, sleep on. They would lay down the ground, they just recline the ground, have a, have a bit, of, bit of carpet on the ground and that'd be the table, the food beyond that. They'd lay on one arm, put the food, get the food in the other arm and eat this way. They, they, they wouldn't have a table or chairs to sit on. Um, <coughs> cooking utensils, very, very simple. They have a hole in the ground, they make their food. They could be inside the, their home if it's going to be wet outside or outside the home normally. So normally outside the home, there'd be a hole in the ground for like a little oven they'd make. Otherwise, be inside the, inside the home and a, a window would be used like a chimney. You have also... Um, uh, for sleeping arrangements, they slept on the floor completely. Now in Luke 11, I want to show you 5 to 7. Without understanding this, this passage wouldn't mean very much. But Luke 11, verses 5 to 7. We have someone knocking on a guy's door at night. He said, which one of you should have a friend and shall go unto him at midnight and say unto him, Friend, lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine in his journey has come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. And he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not, the door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot arise and give thee. I say unto you, Though he will not rise and give him because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity, he will rise and give him as many as he needeth. Now in this passage over here, He's in bed with his kids. In other words, there's a mat in the ground. He sleeps on one side. Child, 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 child. Mum on the other side. Now, if he's on one side, the door's over there. He says, excuse me, I'm in bed. I can't walk over all my kids. Go to the door and give you what you want. So go away, please. The door is shut. Hospitality is closed. The door is shut. Okay? So I'm not open for business. But if the guy keeps on banging, 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 he'll get up. Disturb his whole family, get the bread, give it to him so he can go away. So the pattern over here is the guys slept on the, um, slept on the, um, on the ground with their mats 
all the family over there in the one room. This is not uncommon. We're told of uh, Mary and Joseph. Now, they went to an inn. There's no place in the inn for them. So put them in a stable. What's a stable? Just a one room uh, dwelling where animals were kept in there. And if I normally, I went to the place in Lebanon, there's a home over here, there's your one room over here, that room's got the animals. So turn right, that's a stable, go straight ahead, it's the room. And then you can smell the difference between both places and the odour is there. And just simply the fact that they had the animals very, very nearby. So people lived very, very, very basic top of lives, slept on dirt floor, and there's nature's all around them, and that's what they experienced. That's just normal. For lighting, they'd simply have a small lamp, there'd be a wick on it, and there'd be olive oil in the lamp, and they'd be on a lampstand. Now, if a person had money, he'd leave the light on all night. If there's no light on, it gives the impression there's nobody home or somebody died. So the whole idea is, let your light so shine before men. Matthew 5.16. Let your light so shine. People think, ah, there's life in that home. Why? I can see a light in there. There's life over there. So that would be people who'd be conscious of the fact that they need to make sure that uh, the home, I mean, not, a, not, a, not a, a, a luxurious home, but something called a light makes a real big difference if you can show it there. In signs of poverty, they couldn't afford the lamp, okay, they wouldn't have it. But otherwise, they definitely should have it. When it comes to cooking, <clears throat> normally outside the house, the stove is simply an open clay box or a jar with holes and sides, and sometimes they dig a hole in the ground and put your coals in that over there and put their food on top of that and cover it like an oven. When it comes to fuel, they just simply use timber, but in the Bible, Ezekiel 4.15, they can use dried dung in case of extreme poverty or siege. There'd be grass or there'd be uh, sticks or thorns that'll use to ignite a fire. And the most important, the best thing they had was charcoal. That's something that could be used and, um, and maintain the fire, maintain the heat for a long period of time. So charcoal was the best thing. And I mentioned before, chimney, just simply the window or maybe a small hole in the roof that they let the, uh, let the smoke out. So on that first page over there, you see basically the one room and on and the courtyard in front, not all had courtyards. This one had a courtyard. On the uh, middle one, you find a, a bigger, bigger home. And this would be a bit more than one room. And, they, and they, over there, they get in the house tops full of grass. On the bottom left hand side, here we have a house, more than one room, from someone who has a bit more money. He can pave the floor. He has several rooms on the outside, the courtyard's inside. And in the centre of the uh, courtyard, you've got a cistern. He has his own will. They didn't have plumbing inside the house. They'd go down to a stream, get their bucket of water and come back again. Well, this, place, this guy over here, he's got his own cistern in his courtyard. And with his own well over there, draw his water out of that well completely. And uh, it's like a privilege and an honour to do that. Now, also because of this thing, you find that they'd have their bath in the courtyard. Now, the walls are high up, so no one can walk past and look in. So you'd be over there, you go outside and you wash yourself. Now, they wouldn't jump inside their, their cistern, <laughs> very, very deep. They wouldn't do that. They couldn't get out again. They simply put the bucket down over there, draw out the water, get a rag and just sponge themselves. They'd wash themselves. There's no bathtubs. I, don't, I haven't seen any bathtubs so far in any documents I've seen so far. So basically, they'd wash themselves. Now, if you turn the page over, um, the bottom right-hand side, a bit kind of dark, it's a make-believe picture, an illustration, uh, a guy up in a palace, and the guy left-hand side is supposed to be David, he's looking over his um, little balcony, and he's looking down upon Jerusalem. That'd be a normal, normal situation for David, normal. And we're told in, um, in Second uh, Samuel chapter 11 that one time an evening tide, couldn't sleep, got up, walked on top of his... Uh, uh, top of the balcony over there, looking over, and he looked down upon and he saw this woman bathing herself or washing herself. She'd be in the courtyard, way down below. It's night time. She thinks, okay, it's night time, it's dark, no one can see anything. And then she's washing herself. Well, David saw, and temptation came into his life, and sin developed. But basically, it's not a strange thing for people to wash themselves in the opening courtyards. Now, obviously, it was evening time, thinking, no one can see me. And so they'd be the very, very moral people. 
They're very moral people. There's no way in the world that expose themselves purposely. No way in the world. So she thought she was taken care of properly. But up there in the palace, who knows how far away it was, looking around, and when the guy's outside of God's will, he's looking for trouble. And he did. Now, uh, in the middle of the photo over there, you see a picture of a village. This is Nazareth. Now, if you notice over there, the buildings look as if they've been fallen down, demolished. No, it's still working. And the stones over there, they're just simply sandstones that have been stuck together. And then the village over there, you're, all you see basically is house upon house upon house. You don't see beautiful gardens, beautiful trees everywhere. They didn't do that. They didn't do that. Even in Lebanon, it's the same basic thing. Top left-hand side is one of the houses in Nazareth. And that's the top of the house over there. And you can see there's grass growing on the rooftop. And there's like a bit of a, uh, bit of a um, veranda roundabout. And the doorway to the one-room home is open. So these are, these are the type of things that's normal in the Middle East. So if you went over there, that's a normal sight you'd see in a village. Not in a city. In a village, you see that's normal. Bottom left-hand side, that's just a picture that someone, I suppose, dreamt up. It's not a photograph or anything of a, a, a home. I think it's a, it's a home with several rooms. And there's your uh, battlements or your wall on top of the roof over there so no one falls over. And people in their normal cultural garments. Uh, that's just like a normal picture, your normal thing you'd expect to see. Okay, so that there is just absolutely normal. You go to people's home, there's always people around, they're sitting down, they're talking on the ground, on mats and everything. That's just a normal type of thing. Today, they'll have chairs, they'll have tables like normal. But back then, no, no. See, that, that's expensive. You're talking about someone being a carpenter and making you something, that's expense. And they just, they, they, because these people, they come from nomadic background where they couldn't, they couldn't use these things because they moved from place to place, they wouldn't have them. They just simply sit on the ground, they lay on the carpet, and uh, that's, that's, their, that's their whole existence. They got used to that. You have a person who goes bush, they have a, a tent with them, and they're little thick, rubber thing, but this thick, and they lay it out and sleep on top of it, and a little pillow, and they've got a sleeping bag. They're happy, they're content. They're bushies, they walk around the place all the time, they're content, no problems. Aboriginals, they're content with very, very basic lifestyle out of there. That, that's their life, they, they're content with that, yeah. He spreads a towel before me, yeah? What sort of table is that referring to? Yeah. As I mentioned, the table was a thing on the ground, a mat, and there's all the food that was prepared over there. Now, David is in a palace, okay? A palace over there that can build structural items, that can build these different things. But we're talking about a home. Home didn't have that. Now, with a, with a, with a like, think about Solomon, what he had done. And uh, the amount of things that he had for his daily food, he, I mean, a couple hundred people would eat at his daily, daily provision. A couple hundred people. So there you find a bit more elaborate than what you have in an ordinary home. But in an ordinary home, imagine a one-room home. You've got no room for furniture. If there was furniture there, you couldn't fit the people in there. So it's not possible. So it's, uh, like my, my office up there would be about the size of three homes. And so you, can't have, you just can't have furniture in there. There's no space for it. You go to some places and you're looking for three bedroom houses to buy and the rooms are so, so small. You plonk a bed, you plonk a, a little table, a little cupboard and there's no room to move. They're just so, so small. Get rid of the furniture. Ah, oh, much better now. So you find uh, the furniture just clutters things up and uh, if you've got a family, you just can't have that. Okay, so basically this is uh, roughly, you're looking at the, the culture back then. Houses are more than one room. Um, you find that in the time of um, Elisha, when there was this great woman, this Shunammite woman, great men and rich, and he'd come around time and time again and said, man, this guy's a man of God. Let's build him a room just for him. So they built him a room. And there was his bed, a candlestick, so he can, so he can uh, simply sit down and have a, have a, there's a basic, basic, basic thing for him. He come, enjoy himself over there and move on. Come, enjoy himself and move on. Just basic stuff. And that's built on top, of her, on top of her home. So people with money could do more, but the, the culture didn't demand too much more. They never had really, really big, spacious things like we have over here today. Now, over there today, different. They, they've, they've kind of said, right, we, we've suffered long enough. Now you find they have homes where their roof is maybe, 
what is it? we have 2.4 meters now, they'll have maybe three and a half meter roofs, four meter roofs. And the rooms are much bigger. And you look at a home, you think, mate, this is a three story job. As an ordinary house. As an ordinary house. Because nowadays they think, well, let's say they suffered enough in the past, they're going to make up for it now. And so they live with these great big solid uh, concrete homes that are very big and very spacious and very cold. Because <sighs> they, they can never get heating enough to be able to heat those places up. And that's what they enjoy nowadays. But before, that was their life. I, I visited um, one home in Lebanon. The whole place was made of sandstone blocks and inside the room was like this. The roof was like that. I'm thinking, how did they do it? Sandstone block, you know, just kind of this type of stuff, curved. It's beautiful, beautiful work. It the, the workmanship is excellent, but the material is just basic. Just what you'd find in the hill somewhere. Cut it out of the hill and come and, come and use it up there. So they use materials that are just lying around everywhere, and the workmanship is excellent. And it lasts for hundreds and hundreds of years. Beautiful, beautiful buildings over there. Nowadays, uh, we have uh, cheap materials. You can put them up in a hurry, and that the last 10 years, you're doing good. Then you start repairing them and you renovate them and all the rest. They're not really built to last nowadays. Any questions? So here we have two pages. The, uh, just to give you an idea of the uh, homes over there. And um, uh, Israel is a very mountainous area. So you see the picture of Nazareth. Your house is built on a hill. Very, very mountainous area. Which means uh, you can see things from far distances. You might have a beautiful view from your home. You can look out and see valleys and uh, it's not unusual for them to build a home on the side of a mountain because you don't have flat land everywhere. So on the side of a mountain, you have a home built over there. You see that it comes out, great big, long, massive pillar going into, the, into the, some sort of foundation below and then you have the slab over here and then you have the home on top. So homes on the side of mountains, that's obvious. And with the Jews, they basically simply didn't build a home, they simply had a cave. They lived in a cave on the side of mountains. The Howard Mountain, many mountains were honeycombed with caves. They'd be their homes. And they live over there. So one one-room dwellings could be a one-room cave they lived in. Uh, in the area down the Dead, Dead Sea area, that's where they would have lived in over there. Just natural home for them to, to inhabit in. Okay, any questions? All right, God bless you. That's it for today.